Hi, it's Dennis. And hey, Anne. How are you guys doing today? Today's topic is cats and boats. Cats Sailing. And boats and cats and boats. Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot <laughs> about that song. Sailing with cats and boats. And we yes. have met quite a few challenges in our adventure. We, when we lost our dog, we decided to adopt two rescue cats that are sisters that were pretty young because our intent was to get them used to sailing. And um, they do great sailing, but there are a few things we run into along the way yeah. as we ramp up the learning curve with them. So first and foremost, if you have a cat carrier, leave your cats in the cat carrier until you have left your slip yes. and until you, <laughs> and as you come into the slip because they are escape artists and they will do anything and everything possible within their means to get off the boat before you do, which includes, I think it was Disco that one time. Yeah. As we're coming into the slip, she decided to jump yeah. onto the finger pier. No, she jumped she to the neighboring the boat. The neighbor boat, which like, is probably like four feet away at the time. Yeah, four feet yeah. across water to yeah. jump to the neighboring boat. Yeah, so, so that was a fun challenge. <laughs> <laughs> As you saw in our last one of our last episodes, we have the netting that we put up. Uh, we use that on the handful of times that we've had to stay in the in the marina in the slip to keep the cats secured in the boat because again they will try to escape. Um, and even with that netting, and he's talking about the no seam netting that we put over our companionway opening and over the hatch over the V berth. Even with that netting. We're sleeping and um, all of a sudden, I was thinking we had squirrels on the boat because you hear the <laughs> And then I was like, what's going on? And I was like, cats! Yep. So, <laughs> bolt out of bed as much as you can bolt out of a V-berth. And they had figured out, those little rascals, how to get through an opening because I guess we didn't snap it all the way up. Yep. And um, finding them was a real challenge. They go on random people's boats yeah. in the marina and hide on their boats. Yeah. So Circo was easier to find because she's a little more loving and she's more food motivated. Yeah, she's really lazy too. Yeah, she's lazy. Disco, yeah. if she doesn't want to be caught, that little yeah. cat's not going to get caught. So we're <laughs> almost to the T dock on our uh, on our pier, and I guess it's maybe about 50 yards down. Mm -hmm. um, so immediately I start walking towards shore figured that's where she would be going. Uh, made it all the way down, didn't see her, and as I was coming back, she was actually still on two boats down. Two boats all. down. Yeah, yeah Randy watching me boat. the whole time. Yeah. It's like a little turd. I thought I was being really sly, so I had, we keep a, a net with a long handle on her boat in case they should go overboard and we had to bring them back up. And so I'm walking real sly with it behind my back. And I went back and forth past her several times. She's probably watching me knowing I have this net in my hand. Yeah, she's sitting there with her little paw. <laughs> like this. Huh, you guys don't see me. Yeah. So. yeah. But they absolutely, <laughs> when we're at anchor, they are incredibly awesome. Because one, they can't go anywhere. Yeah. And cats just naturally have great balance. They've never fallen overboard. We drop a line overboard, a thick piece of rope, in case they have to get back on board. Which is something we'll have to try and do one of these days to train <laughs> them to... To make sure they know. Know where the rope is and to they, try and, and climb the rope. Climb up the, rope. Uh, the other thing we have, too, is like a little boogie board that mm -hmm. we would toss over. So it at least gives them something to, to hold on to and grab on to should they fall overboard. Yeah. Well, and actually, we put that boogie board, if you recall, on our boat... Because when we took on water, if we had taken on that water from our original anchorage, we probably wouldn't have made it across the bay and we would have sunk. And having two cats swimming with us would have been a nightmare and scratches. <laughs> so we thought with the boogie board, at least we could kind of set them on that and they would maybe feel secure. Yeah. I don't know how well in reality that works. You all have ideas on how you've done sailing with cats and what your yeah. kind of rescue plan is if they go with you? Yeah, there's a couple of Facebook groups that address sailing with cats. Uh, when we first got the cats, we did buy the little PFDs <laughs> for them, but I wish we had video that, of that didn't work because you know you, you put it on them, and then the second they sense that constriction, they just 
fall over. Fall like, over and just lay there. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, you can take them for a drag with the leash, but <laughs> yeah. that just yeah. didn't work. So. It wouldn't help them. So we figured <laughs> we would rely on the cat's natural ability to swim. Well, and, so, and yeah. we actually read that they're better off without them. Yeah. That cats just do better without. It seems counterintuitive. Um, we're open to ideas. Again, we're we're still finding our way yeah. <laughs> out sailing with cats. Are. Yeah. And then you have to tell them about the time we had a near smackdown when we brought a spinnaker out <laughs> <laughs> in really high winds, yeah. which was really bad. On which is part. a topic for another episode. <laughs> oh, I wish we had footage but, of that. So needless to say, you know, we nearly had a smackdown. So we probably hit, I don't remember, 30 degrees. Oh, way more than 30, because we can sail at 30 without dipping the okay. sail. Yes, you're right. It was more, way more than 30. Way, well, more, way more yeah. than 30. So on board we have a closed litter box. It's not open, which where we used to have the alcohol stove, uh, we put the litter box there. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden I hear this massive crash from down below. Yeah. So then I go, once the ship has righted itself again, and we're a little bit more under control, uh, I go down below and there's litter everywhere and there's food everywhere, there's water everywhere. There's and all kinds of, of that, things all everywhere. All the contents of the litter box are everywhere. Uh, so that's <laughs> not something so pleasant gross. to step in. Um, which you did. Which I did. You did right. a nice brown skid yeah. on the floor. Oh, that and awesome. that, I remember a few expletives coming out of yeah, your mouth. Just a few. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> um, but one of the things we found too is, you know, most boats are fiberglass and cats tend to be nocturnal type creatures. Uh, so while we're busy sleeping, they're figuring out ways to play and to get into stuff. Oh, and it's so and loud because our boat's small. loud because they found a toy of sorts or that loose screw that you didn't know where it went. Uh, it was just laying around. So they're batting this thing <laughs> down the floor and you hear this just <laughs> in the middle of the night and, and you're like, what is going on? <laughs> yep. It's going on. So that's something fun that we've experienced. So we make sure to try and secure everything as much as possible before we go to bed. Be loud and dragged be loud across and the dragged. floor. Yeah. Yeah. Another thing we have to um, do because again we sleep in the V berth is the opening uh, where you get into the V berth is where our heads are. Well, you don't want to have your heads right by the openings because they'll jump right up and you're just like. <laughs> <laughs> getting clawed in the face. So yeah. um, we purposely keep our heads away from the center opening where they'll jump up. Right. And I think the last piece is uh, <laughs> the litter box. Um, we've gone through a couple different iterations. I think the one we've settled on for the boat is those little pine pellets. Yeah, the pine pellets seem to track the least. Track the least because your typical traditional clay litter tends to be all over the place yeah. uh, and then you know you're mostly barefoot on a boat anyway so then that's just kind of gross to be stepping in and they track it all over so on your cushions you yeah. have litter um, yeah whereas the pine doesn't seem to spread everywhere right on so, to so that's a good um, where they yeah. go but if there are versions of litter or how you do your litter <laughs> box we are more than open to suggestions and would love to hear your feedback on how you provide the litter box for your cats yeah and any other tips and tricks for sailing with cats. Our cats do awesome while we're under sail, but they absolutely despise the engine. So um, fortunately we do sail predom the predominant amount of time, yeah. but we have to get in and out of the slip. So we do tend to put them in their carriers uh, when we are coming, when we're gonna motor and we're coming to any um, pump out type location, because they've also escaped we pulled up to the pump out dock to pump out our boat, which we do every time we come back to the marina. And sure enough, one of the cats, we just pull up and they're just, Doop! and then they're off. Yep. And catching a cat when they don't want to be caught is yep. tricky. And then, you know, the last thing you want to do when you're trying to secure your boat near a bunch of other boats is be worrying about the cat running away. Yeah. So. And there's something else I was thinking about that we do. Oh yeah, so we um, got harnesses for mm. them and we have leashes and on the handle end of the leash, we have a little teeny carabiner. So if they are, if we're under sail and they're walking around the boat, we tend to keep them leashed and secured to something on the boat. It's not 
totally secure, like a, a jack line and a harness for a human, right. but we figure it's something and also it keeps them a little more under control. We don't want them going all the way forward on the boat. This keeps them in reach. <laughs> because it's funny, because <laughs> you know, cats are very independent, little-minded creatures. Oh, and so sure. when we connect them to each other, <laughs> one cat wants to go here, and get, like jump off the boat or something. Yeah. The other cat's like, oh, I want to look over here. And then they get to a certain point where it's the like rope, the line, the leash is taut and they're <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> trying to pull on each other. So in essence, they're going nowhere, which is great for us because yeah. they uh, don't have that ability to effectively communicate their intentions to each other. <laughs> so <laughs> it's just this little game of tug of war. Yeah. Yeah. But we found since bringing them on the boat, since they're indoor only cats, they were just crazy to go outdoors once we're here at home. So we ended up building a cat run for them, just a little enclosed space so they can go outside but safely because even though we're very urban here in the city of Alexandria, there are a lot of fox. I saw a fox actually this morning on my commute to work, right down the street. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> what does a fox say? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, we have neighbors who have sadly lost cats to fox, so we really do not like to have our cats running free in the neighborhood, um, not to mention Other all cats. the traffic. <laughs> so, um, did I make my point? Yeah, well, and so we have security cameras around the house as well. Um, and on the little cat run we created, it's some oh. green chicken wire, not wire, but green well, mesh netting. That'll be our intro for this video. And <laughs> there's a neighbor cat that was coming around and of course, two cats get together and don't know each other. Well, anyway, you got to see the video. It's it's pretty impressive. Well, by the time they hear this, they will have seen oh, okay. the video. Because As you saw in the intro <laughs> video, what the cat just burst through that green mesh netting and yeah. broke a zip tie or two yeah. in her effort to have her own GTFO plan. <laughs> and the thing is, they've <laughs> never tried to escape again, but... Um, Soko, our larger cat, is very <laughs> territorial and she was so mad to have a cat kind of taunting her on the other side of the netting. <laughs> she just plowed right through it and you'll notice it looks like we maybe put the video on fast forward. It, this is regular speed. Yeah. That's literally how fast it happened. She was moving. <laughs> and the fact that she broke the seam um, between the, where the two bits of mesh met and then we had zip ties. So we have since reinforced that with thicker and more frequently placed zip ties along that seam. A little shock collars for the cat. No, no <laughs> we would never do that. <laughs> Angels. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So we do a little closing outro or just um, nah. Oh, that. You gotta do that part. We already have that. Yeah. Oh, here's a question. So, we have mentioned in a previous video that you may or may not have seen. Our plan for our boat name, our future boat name, uh, this is just our practice boat that we have right now, but for our Neo 51, <laughs> we're gonna name her Just the Kiss because that describes our incredible second date, Just mm -hmm. the Kiss. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but we kind of like the idea of naming our next boat GTFO. What do you think? Yeah. Let, Let us, us know. know in the comments. Yeah, we'd appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and please smash the subscribe button and the like button. We appreciate it. Bye.